in today's lecture we will look at time constraint scheduling. So, time constraint scheduling is, is the problem of uh, allocating C steps to operations using a minimum number of resources given a latency constraint. So, we will be given that we must schedule, uh, we must complete the scheduling within a given number of C steps. And within that given number of C steps, with that upper bound on the given number of C steps, I must try to minimize the amount of resources that I will use. So, this problem like the resource constraint scheduling problem is an NP complete problem and has a similar state space. So, before uh, as we did for the resource constraint scheduling problem, we will look at the ILP model. So, the ILP model for uh, the latency constraint scheduling problem um, is, is very similar to that of the resource constraint scheduling problem. The, the main difference being the objective here differs. So, what is the objective here? We want given a bound on the time within which to schedule, I need to minimize the resource that is that is consumed. That means, the area that is consumed by the circuit. I want to minimize the area that is consumed by the circuit given a limit on the time that I can use to schedule the operations in my DAG. So, how do we specify this objective? Minimize k equals to 1 to n r cost k into a k. So, if this is what does this mean? Here cost k is the area cost for resource of type k and a k denotes the number of resources of type k. So, what do we want to minimize here? We want to uh, given, uh, given the area that a certain resource, a certain functional unit will take means I know before the scheduling for each type of resource, I, I am given the type of resources. Now, for each given type of resource, I know the total amount of area that is consumed by one instance of the resource that is known to me. However, I, I through scheduling, I need to find out how many resources of each type should I use so that I will be able to schedule all the operations in my DAG in the given time constraint and while minimizing the total resource consumed by total area consumed by this set of resources. So, that is why for resource suppose, suppose I have two resources multiplier and adder then let us say a 1 is adder and a 2 is multiplier then cost 1 is the cost area cost of, of the adder and cost 2 is the area cost of the multiplier. So, uh, an, an important thing to note here is that unlike the resource constraint scheduling problem, a k is not known. That means, the number of resources of type k is not known. It is now an unknown auxiliary variable and that has to be that, that has to be determined by appropriately scheduling the operations. Also, in this problem, we need a Speci uh, latency constraint, a specific latency constraint. And let us say that latency constraint given to us is lambda. Now, in the previous one, we also had an upper bound of the latency constraint lambda, but we wanted to minimize the time within which to schedule all operations given the number and types of resources. Here, we also have a time constraint lambda but here we want to minimize the resources so that max within this lambda I, I can schedule all my operations. So, uh, what do I want, uh, what is the latent, how is the latency constraint specified? It is specified by saying that here it will, um, here I have, I have written a bit wrong, uh, a bit wrong in the sense that this i variable will be n. So, what I want is that the nth variable this whole expression tells me the start time of the nth operation. The nth operation that means the sync node. 
I am saying that the sync node should be scheduled at most within lambda plus one. So for all the other nodes, sync node is a dummy node. So for all the actual operations that I have, that must be scheduled within lambda and the start time of the sync node should be l less than or equal to lambda plus one. So uh, here again, I am telling that uh, there is a mistake in the expression. Here I should be replaced by n the sync node. So what I want to say again, I want to specify that the start time of the sync node should be less than my time constraint plus one. So the overall ILP formulation for the time constraint scheduling problem becomes minimize the objective function such that the constraints that are specified. We'll go through the constraints, just uh, brush up, brush them up very quickly. The objective function again is what? Uh, objective function attempts to minimize the total area of the circuit um, while, uh, such that the operations can be scheduled within the time constraint lambda. Now here the first uh, constraint here specifies the unique start times of uh, all nodes as we have seen in the last lecture. This one, um, the second constraint uh, gives me the dependency constraints. That means if I have two nodes with edges, uh, dependency or precedence constraint edges between them, then one must be scheduled after dj times the other has complete, uh, after dj times the other has started. So the start time of the dependent operation should be dj times, uh, after, sorry, after dj amount of time, the first operation where dj is the delay or execution time of the first operation. Now, we also have resource constraints. We said that for each resource type at each time step, I can only use a maximum number of um, uh, resources. I can only use a maximum number of AK resources of type K. So that, that is how we specify resource constraints. But again, here AK is not known and uh, is an outcome of the scheduling problem. It's an auxiliary, uh, auxiliary variable here. And then we specify the latency constraint, which is uh, specified by the start time of the nth or the, uh, or the start time of the sync node, right? So the sync node must start at most within lambda plus one uh, time steps. Given uh, this formulation, we will now take a small example. So how does this uh, um, uh, formulation proceed? Given this operation constraints graph on the left, we let us say we use the same uh, time constraint lambda equals to four. We know the solution, but we'll go through the steps here um, uh, while doing time constraint scheduling. So we are given the operation constraints graph and we are given the, given the constraint on the time. We are also given the types of resources. So for k equals to one, ALU, I have a cost. I have a cost of one. For k equals to two multiplier, I have a cost of five. I have a cost of five. So what does it mean? It says that, it, it says that ALU has an area cost of one and multiplier has an area cost of, multiplier has an area cost of two. Here this is not cost one but cost two. So cost two is five. That means the multiplier unit, functional unit or resource consumes an area of five on the circuit and the ALU which is one, K equals to one, has a cost of one meaning that the ALU consumes an area of one on the circuit. Now given this, we know that to, to schedule this, we need at least two ALUs and two multipliers from the resource constraint scheduling problem. So this is what we did not go through, but this is what the ILP will exactly tell me, the time constraint scheduling um, ILP will also give me the same solution that to schedule within four time steps, you need at least two ALUs and two multipliers and that is the least cost solution that you have in terms of area required. So what is the cost? So, so let us say if I require two ALUs and two multipliers as I have said, 
the total cost will be the total multiplied cost plus the total ALU cost. So what will be the area cost, total area cost of the circuit? So five is the cost of one instance of the multiplier. I have two multipliers, so the total cost is 10. And one is the cost, area cost of the ALU. I have two ALUs, so two is the total ALU cost. So the total area cost of the circuit becomes 12. So with, uh, with this understanding of the ILP solution, we, progr we, we now briefly see how um, uh, the branch and mount solution uh, differs for the time constraint scheduling problem with respect to the resource constraint scheduling problem. Now in the time constraint scheduling problem, at any given state of the state space, what do we, what do we store? We store the maximum number of resources that I have consumed in steps one through I minus one. So we take the same simplistic assumption that I have one type of resource, one type of resource, three instances of that type of resource, and everybody we are consuming, uh, we are assuming has a delay of one. So what will be the max resources? That means at each time step I will require some number of resources. Uh, okay, here I need to minimize the, num the number of resources uh, uh, is not given to me. Here I want to minimize the number of resources. Now, at any given state, I have started from the root and have come to this state. At a any given state, the, the, the way in which the state space will be expanded will, will be a bit different here from, for the time constraint scheduling compared to the example that we took for the resource constraint scheduling. Why? Because here, we will no more exhaustively uh, allocate all resources. We will no more exactly allocate all resources to all the time steps. We want to minimize, uh, we want to minimize resources. Th rather, the number of resources is not given to me. We, our choices will be allocating each operation to a distinct resource. I may allocate an operation to a resource, I may not allocate an operation to a resource. And we, although the other things uh, what we discussed for the um, uh, for the branch and bound remain same, that I need if all my uh, if if uh, all my operations at a particular time step gets exhausted, I need to increment time to get back any resource that I have. Right. So uh, at any point in time, th the branch this branch and bound here will keep an account of the maximum number of resources that has been used in C steps one through I minus one. Why? Because if that many resources have already been used from the initial state to the current state, that many resources will at least be required. Because we have already used in a certain time steps three resources in parallel, let us say. So the three resources will be required in the, uh, in, the, in the solution. What is the solution we again said? a path from the root to the leaf in the state space tree is a solution, is an enumeration of that solution. So in that path, if the maximum number of resources that has been consumed at a time step is three, there is no way that I can execute, um, that, that I can, uh, that I can um, produce a schedule with this path that consumes less than three resources. So the answer for this path will be three resources. So what is the basically the answer uh, in, the in the time constraint scheduling pro problem? What is the maximum number of resources that has been uh, used up in any time step uh, in, the, in, in that particular solution from the root to the leaf, right? So that will give me a solution. Now N at that state, N gives me the number of remaining unscheduled operations and T is the remaining C number of C steps. Now, for the resource constraint scheduling problem, we did not know, we wanted to minimize the number of C steps in which I want to schedule. Here, I am given the number of C steps that I have. So I have currently already used a certain number of uh, time steps and I have uh, a certain number of time steps within which to schedule my remaining operations. And my basic um, objective is to minimize the consumption of resources such that all my operations will actually be scheduled 
in those mini those t remaining number of time steps starting from this uh, starting from this state so what is my pruning function here fn my pruning function here uh, i will first start with a very crude pruning pruning function a very crude pruning function here would be that um, the maximum of r i minus 1 which means that the maximum of the number of resources that i have already used in any of the t prior time steps between i equal to 1 to i equal to i i minus 1 that means uh, before this uh, time before the current time step what is the maximum number of resources in any given time step that i have used and a lower bound on the minimum number of resources that may that may that i may need to use at any given time step for the remaining time steps so i have a i have a remaining number of time steps in any of these time steps what is the lower bound of the maximum number of resources that i may need now a max of r i minus 1 and seal n by uh, n by n by t so seal n by t it gives me what n is the remaining number of operations t is the remaining number of time steps so n by t is the is is the minimum number of resources that i may need to uh, in, that i may need at any time step given that i can use the maximum there are no dependency constraints given that there are no dependency constraints n by t is the minimum number of resources that i may need at all time steps in uh, in the re for the remaining t time steps that i have now r i minus 1 comma seal n by t max of this gives me the lower bound for my current state so why do i why do we use this fn we use this fn to compare with the current best solution that i have so i have already um, um, traversed through uh, an another path of the state space and have already found a, a, a current solution now we will compare at this state with the um, with the current solution if the current solution the current best solution tells me that it can scheduled with a lower number of resources within the time bound then my solution um, lower number of resources than the lower bound that is produced by by um, at this state so at this state fn gives me a lower bound of the minimum number of resources lower bound of the number of resources that i will require at any time step now when when i am comparing with the current best solution what i am getting is that when is the current best solution solution um, uh, be always better than the lower bound when will it be when the current best solution has a lower value the current best solution will have a lower value meaning that the the uh, in that solution the maximum number of resources that that i may require to use in parallel at any time step is lower than the minimum number of resources that i require for this solution so at this state i can prune the rest of the subtree which means that i i do not need to explicitly expand the rest of the subtree and can and can look into other parts of the of the state space to find a better solution now seal n by t is a crude solution uh, we can still use better and better solutions but i i leave it to the student uh, i leave it to the student to find these solutions um, and uh, we may discuss outside the scope of this lectures in the assignments